In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the basics of creating HTML pages. Clevercat does not create entire websites. Instead, it creates the catalog content, which is typically displayed in an inline frame, as shown on our web samples page. The page navigation at the top of the frame is created automatically, but the category navigation shown on the left is something you will create on your own. On the web samples page, right click to view the page source. Okay. You can see that there is very little to creating the category navigation. Basically, these are just links to the target of CAD content, which is the name of the frame. An inline frame can be scrolling or non scrolling. In this example, the frame does not scroll and the user scrolls the entire page. In this example, the frame is scrolling and the category navigation is always visible. Let's start with the template designer. For the most part, any template you design for printing will work equally well for HTML. Here's the design for the printed template, and here's a print preview. Something to avoid is overlapping fields. This is allowed for printing templates, but not for HTML. Here, I've made a copy of the printing template and removed the overlapping field. I've also resized the fields to create a small gap between them. This generally gives better results. Now let's look at the HTML configuration. Clevercat creates both HTML and PHP files. I'll cover the specifics of PHP in another tutorial. The first thing to set is the width of the frame. In our web samples example, the actual width of the frame is 800 pixels. If your frame will be scrolling, you need to set a smaller value here to leave space for the scroll bar, as well as some extra room to avoid crowding. The number of rows and columns in your template design does not apply to HTML, so you'll set the maximum allowed in the frame here. This resizing script is optional. If you create a non-scrolling inline frame, you can set the height so that it is greater than the maximum height of the content, or use this script to automatically adjust it. We've included a script that works for current browsers, but it may have to be changed in the future. The page navigation at the top of the form is created automatically, and you have some display options. This example shows all three options enabled. When you create the HTML files, you have the option to copy the photos from the folders specified in the category editor to a local folder. First, enter the name of the image folder on your web server. When you use the copy option, a folder of the same name will be created as a subfolder of the local output folder. In this example, I'm using C colon my web pages as the local output folder and photos as the image folder. You can include HTML tags in your catalog data. Normally, you would not want these tags to be printed in your paper catalog, but you can uncheck this option if you need to print them for troubleshooting purposes. By default, a separate style sheet file is created for every category. If all your categories use the same template, you can choose the single CSS file option. This is useful if you intend to manually edit the style sheets. Clevercat can automatically include the the code for a PayPal shopping cart in your HTML pages. Enter your account details on this form. On the cart form, enable the shopping cart and select either a quantity input field or an add to cart button. You can select any image file on your computer or enter a link to a PayPal button. A PayPal cart can accept two description fields. The second one is optional, but you must select the primary field which contains the product description or part number that you want to submit to the cart. You also need to select the field which contains the price. Clevercat is compatible with PayPal shipping options. If your data contains the shipping price for each item, select that field here. You can also select how much additional quantities of the same item cost to ship. This value can vary from 0 to 100%. If you're using PayPal's integrated shipping cost calculator, where the shipping charge varies with the order total, 
select the predefined values option. Creating HTML files is just as easy as printing them. Select the categories to be printed, select or enter a folder to be created, and click the print button. All the necessary files will be created in that folder. The files will be sequentially numbered for as many as are required for that category. If you selected the Copy Photos option, the image subfolder will also be created. This allows you to preview the web page without uploading it. Simply double click any file to view it in your browser. Notice that the page navigation count matches the number of files. If you enabled the PayPal shopping cart, you can even test that from your own computer. The next set of options we'll look at is the Link Templates option on the Category Editor. If you leave the HTML template selection blank, then the template you've selected for a printed catalog will be used. In the pages I've previewed so far, I've used a copy of the printed template. Now, I want to create a page of thumbnails that link to pages with more detail. To do this, I've already created a template which contains only the name of the product and its photo. You can jump directly to the template editor using this button. You'll notice that I have fields placed on either side of the photo. This is a trick you can use to restrict the height of the image, and I'll explain further once we get to the preview of this page. These fields have no data in them, so they'll appear to be empty. Back on the template editor, we can now select the original HTML template as the link template, and return to the printing menu. There's one last change to make before printing. Click the Configuration button to get to the frame setup. Because I'm creating a page of thumbnails, I want to increase the number of columns. Now I'm ready to print. Open the output folder again to see the files. This time, you can see that a lot more files are created. There are three files matching the name of the category, and many more with the category name and detail. I'll double click the first file in the main group. This is the template I created with only the name of the product and the photo. I'll highlight the blank fields that I placed on either side of the photo, so you can see how they keep the images from being too large. Without these blank fields, the image would have expanded to its full width, and as a result, the images would have been much taller than I wanted them. Click any of the photos to see the link template. You'll notice there's no page navigation at the top, and this template is displayed at the full width of the frame. When you use a linked template with the shopping cart enabled, Clevercat assumes the first page will be thumbnails, so the cart will only be enabled on the linked pages. We'll look at how the quantity box or add to cart button is created. Typically, when you use a table of data, the prices are always shown on the right. So Clevercat will automatically add the field or button to the right of this inside the table. You don't have to leave space for the button when you're designing your template. Clevercat will automatically adjust the widths of the other fields. If your data is not organized into tables, you still need to add a detailed table to your template design. You don't actually have to display any data in it if you don't want. In this example, I've created a table which has only a single field which contains no data. The result is what appears to be a standalone cart button. 